So this is our lettuce bed. One of the first things that we plant in the spring and you can see they're pretty much done for the season. They're all going to seed and there's still a few pretty little flowers left. I like to leave the flowers for the pollinators. They really love them. Also, don't touch them like I just did. They're super sticky and gross. Swiss chard is doing really well this year, again, because Swiss chard is amazing. We've already harvested a bunch from this bed and just recently I thinned them out. Um, but we've got quite a few different varieties here from seed swaps. And then we also have a dwarf curled kale over here and a Chinese white celery. It came from a Chinese pink celery package, but as you can see, it's not pink. But this bed has been really fun. The other day we decided to put Rocky, our pancake tortoise, out here and just have a nice hangout spot for him. So we stuck him in here with a little like wading pool. He's got plenty of space to like crawl under the lettuce forest in here and munch on kale to his delight. And he spent most of the day out here. I went to go get him at the end of the day and he was gone. I couldn't find him like anywhere. He had um, pushed up. Here, I'll show you. He had managed to get in here and push this part up and just pop himself down underneath onto the ground here. Um, pancake tortoises are known to be climbers and by the time that we came out here he was over there by the gate. Turn around to the tomato beds. If you can remember, we pulled out two tomato plants due to some kind of disease. And you know, for not liking tomatoes, gosh, I sure love to grow tomatoes. They, they're so fun to grow. There are so many varieties to choose from. And like, honestly, they're one of the easier plants that you can grow as a beginner gardener. Here's that little Leita tomato plant that I topped at the very beginning of the season. And so it put off a bunch of tomatoes to begin with. Now it's producing this whole other plant. So it's like I got two rounds of tomatoes in one season. We love this tree. It's seriously the reason we bought this house. If you go down this other side, we have a bunch that are just about ready. Here's a big clump of them. Look how pretty. I'm also letting a few of my favorite varieties completely ripen on the vine. Like this one is Cosmonaut Volkov and it's got a great flavor. Uh, my husband loves it. And so I'm going to be saving seeds from it. And so I did post a short little video about how to save seeds. Um, from tomatoes, and then I also have a blog post out. You can read about all the details. This morning was really foggy and cloudy, so I took that opportunity to transplant a bunch of green bunching onions. A bunch, a bunch of bunching onions. A few years ago, I got a small bunch of these onions from a friend. She had a whole bunch of them in her garden. And now I'm so aware of how often I am saying bunch. Um, but she let me come and dig some out and so I grabbed a, a small bunch about this big and planted them right over there. That's probably the original bunch right there. And since then it has turned into like all of this. And it's been, gosh, about two, two and a half years now. So they are called bunching onions for a reason. How sweet are these chamomile heads? I just love them. So here's a giant red mustard that, much like the lettuce, I'm just letting it go to seed because those pollinators love these little yellow flowers. I'm not collecting the seeds from this plant. It 
it didn't produce very well. It had a lot of pest pressure and it, I mean, going to seed is really the only thing it has done successfully so far. I really love the look of the leaves. I think they're really pretty. And calendula. A couple different plants. So right here, that is creeping thyme that I started from seed this winter. And so I plopped a little tiny start in between each of these paving stones. So this is one of my favorite sunflowers. This will be a lemon queen and it's just this really, I mean, for lack of better words, lemony yellow color. It's just a really pretty little flower. And it looks like it's a multiple headed flower where at each node it's developing multiple heads. So that's gonna be gorgeous if it blooms before the squirrels get it. I know some of you have reached out asking about our compost bin system. It's a three bin system that we made with some scrap wood and then it's lined with hardware cloth on the parts that have openings. I won't go over it in great detail right now, but if there's any interest in a video like that, I can certainly do that for you guys. So let me know in the comments. So here is my loofah plant. Um, it's hanging in there. Unfortunately, it had quite a bit of uh, roly-poly and earwig damage that I didn't catch in time. So the loofah, the little loofah that was growing here, didn't survive. I had to pull it off at the stem right there. But it's growing some new side shoots and it's, it's still trying to grow up a little bit more. So we'll see. What I am very excited about is this Kajari melon. Look, it's already showing the stripes. And then this is called a Minnesota midget melon and it is loaded. It has a bunch of little babies on it. So if you guys don't know, this is our chicken pen. We don't have chickens in here, obviously, or I would not be growing <laughs> things in here. We gave our original flock to my parents, and then last year you probably followed along as we raised a few chicks in here as well. Um, those chicks went off to live with my friend Jenna, and we've had an empty coop here for about a year, and so I decided to utilize this space as kind of a greenhouse in a way where it's protected. It has hardware cloth on top, all around the sides, and so I thought I would use that opportunity to grow some things that are pretty difficult to grow to maturity here in Colorado. It's a little watermelon. How beautiful is this cabbage? I just love the leaves. But this one's starting to get a little bit of a head. We also have a few peaches hiding in here. I've tried to cover them up with some reusable produce bags so that maybe we can get them and not the squirrels. Here's one. Starting to turn a little bit of a color. I also can't get over how beautiful these plants are. These are both a naturally variegated type of summer squash. This is called Round Bryce. It's from David's Garden Seeds. And this one I cannot for the life of me remember. I don't know if it was a seed swap um, seed or... I don't remember, but it is gorgeous. And it produces like crazy. Both of them produce like crazy. So they are definitely grow agains if I can find out where my seeds came from. Back behind these squash plants. I planted some fennel because we get quite a few swallowtail butterflies that frequent our yard. This is one of their host plants to lay their eggs on. This 
this is all peppermint chard. I cannot get enough of peppermint chard. It is so beautiful and it's so delicious. One of our favorite ways to eat it is to just lightly saute it, um, wilt it kind of like you would with spinach on the stove, and a little bit of butter and a little bit of salt. Um, we love to eat that with scrambled eggs for breakfast. Look at that big pepper. This is called King of the North and it should ripen into a like red bell pepper. It's a sign from my mom. It's always a good reminder. I'm happy to say our cute camelons are finally, finally making their climb up this trellis. They got a bit of a slow start. They did not like being transplanted. Back here, I knew I saw one. Here it is. Look at it. We got our first little cute camelon. Sweet potato vines are like in this wetter weather that we're having. These leaves are all edible. I think they taste kind of like spinach and they have the texture of spinach too when you cook them. But they are great in a pesto because you can't really, they don't really have a taste of their own. Bush beans. If you guys have been following along, you know I've been having a struggle with getting my bush beans to even get past this point. Um, we've had quite the roly-poly issues this year. And one of my sweet friends on Instagram sent me a collection of bush beans to replace the ones that the roly polies ate. So these these are your plants, Emily. These ones are doing really well. And it looks like I forgot to pull a little potato last year too. Here's a little potato growing in with the beans. Burgundy okra is coming along nicely. And here is my one blooming sunflower. Just like the peaches, I've put one of these fabric and produce bags over the top of it to prevent the squirrels from eating it before I can. So I need two hands to untie this and I'll show you. Okay, this one is called Sunspot. It's like that's a really heavy head for such a short sunflower. So the sun's starting to come out. The fog is starting to dissipate. So we're gonna cut this off, but it's been super fun to be able to record these videos. I started for myself. Like I, I did these videos so I could see um, how quickly things actually grow. So, you, you know, you can go out and you can check on your plants every hour and every day. And it seems like they're doing nothing. But then you look back on these videos and like you have cucumelons within a week or you know things grow a lot faster when you aren't just obsessing over them every day so thanks for hanging out with me you guys um i'll see you in the next one